got to explain something to you about energy flowing through you. You can feel it. It's hot. It's electric. It's magnetic. There's basically, um, basically, you know, the basics are always going to get more in depth as we advance in science. The basics of reality will continue to enhance. But right now, as far as I can tell, basically, electrons are flying through the air as free radicals. They form in clouds called plasma, which is a type of matter. And they surround you in this toroidal vortex where it's coming up, twisting through you and coming out and down and around and up through you and vice versa. It's going down, twisting through and coming out and up and around and down. Same as the Earth's magnetic field, the galactic magnetic field, the sun's magnetic field. Every body has a magnetic field and this energy is kind of ramping up and off and around it, through it, piercing through, absorbing into, shooting out of. The iron in your blood is where the bioenhancitivity comes in. You can move the iron in your blood around with magnetics, with consciousness, with understanding, with healing. And you do, you, if you want to heat up your hand, you send energy to that area and it causes the iron to be magnetically drawn to the electrons. Because iron's magnetic and electrons are, have a negative elect magnetic charge. And then when, as the iron goes there, so do the bl red blood cells, because that's the irons in the red blood cells. So you, you take all these red blood cells to that area of the body, and it starts to produce heat. And that's how you do Reiki and energy work. You shoot energy out of certain parts of your body, or absorb it in. You can suck electrons out of people. You can balance electrons, like Sometimes I'll suck electrons out of someone and then I have the option to shoot them back into them or, you know, obviously I can continue sucking, but you want to try and find this medium and I'll allow the electrons to float and balance and they'll kind of float between bodies. It's really cool. So knowing that, what's stopping you? because like, realizing that we're built to go beyond the barriers and sometimes people would just be like oh it's about to break a barrier and then I won't because it hurts but sometimes I will because it also feels good like punching through bricks and shit you can like with magnetics, like just create an iron wall. It helps for like spasmatic muscle movement if you want to charge, if you want to run really fast. I guess it's the force that the Jedi use in the Sith, the Dark Jedi. You know, I heard that a Sith and a Dark Jedi are two different things. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I remember hearing that force, the magnetic force, I wonder if gravity is actually a type of magnetics, because when you look at frequency, there's what's called a resonating frequency every frequency has, well every, every atom has, like it's vibrating at a frequency and then it's vibrating at a resonating frequency, so it's like when you look at a wheel spinning and then all of a sudden it starts to look like it's spinning backwards, that's kind of like magnetism and gravity. Gravity is magnetism moving so fast that it just looks like it's slowly moving in an opposite direction. Um, that's what I think. I think there might be one force. But you're always going to be able to break different parts. Anyway, this force. What is it? Willpower? Or the ability to 
generate. I mean, I couldn't do it without energy, without having fed myself. I, I talk all high and mighty about the force, but I just ate. And I can feel, I can be creating heat in my core. And that's because of the food, I think. Maybe if I absorbed sunlight and just lived as one of these breatharians or something, these people that just drink water, plant their bare feet in the dirt, and then sun gaze, absorb sunlight, and get their energy and nutrients through the sun and the, the dirt. Last night we were watching Cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson, the new Cosmos series episode, I think episode three or four or something. And it was talking about the speed of light, and of course, in that show, they're still saying that the speed of light it can't eclipse 300 million meters per second, which I believe in a laboratory they bent light and it moves faster than the speed of light, so you know, all barriers are meant to be broken. But light is like a fracturing energy, like when you flex and you see like bulging veins or coming out of the muscle, like that's what the universe is doing when light is created. And it looks like it's traveling, but it's just opening. And a black hole is like a reabsorbance into this body that explodes energy. So I would think that we would be able to survive without eating food just by getting light. It logically makes sense. But, it, I mean, I, obviously there's all sorts of reasonal barriers, reasonality barriers, or whatever you want to call them, that it's like it's, it seems so far out of the picture to stop eating completely and to continue living strong. But it seems, you know, it makes sense that Well, I don't know. So what happened? Light, the earth was created. It was this swirling ball of gas. started to cool down. The, the, heat, the hydrogen side, as it was expand, started to expand, as it started to heat up. And as it started to crack apart, the hydrogen inside of the earth exploded out, mixed with the oxygen in the atmosphere to create all the water. The whole time it was getting bombarded with light. It's the fusion produced by light. It's like this swirling hydrogen just what catalyzes it. What catalyzes the, the fusion? Just motion itself. Just motion. Motion, vibration. An unseen force. There's an unseen vibration. and negative energy. I mean, why is there such thing as two forms of energy if not for it to be the same energy? Check out the Schwarzschild proton. Thank you, Nassim Harriman and Shelley for turning me on to him seven or eight years ago. Uh, he is a scientist that lived out of his van for a long time and figured out that protons are actually as dense as the universe. And they're actually two protons revolving around each other. Like when you look at a proton, it's actually two protons revolving around each other at the speed of light. That the universe is this undulating sphere. It's not really a sphere, but it looks like a sphere. And you know how you create your reality? What's actually happening is we're all creating our reality. Everything in the universe is feeding its perception into the universe, and the universe is feeding back a conglomeration of all those perspectives to everyone. Obviously, there's localization and things like that. You can have your own universe. Like right now, I'm in a room. If I was in a library and there are people sitting around trying to read, it would be a whole other universe right now. But despite the localization, there are no borders, really. There's no such thing as, a, as an actual dividing wall of consciousness, of reality. Everything is connected.
It's like an orgasm. Why people don't stretch all the time? You should do it because it feels like you're fucking orgasming, like your muscles are jizzing. They're really like, ah, oh, oh. I mean, when they really are like, that feeling is so good. I guess they are jizzing lactic acid and stuff, but like, it actually feels like an orgasm sometimes. Like right there, right now, on my side right here, it feels like that those muscles are having like a contractual orgasm. I'm not complaining. Oh. 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 Zero gravity, here we come. <laughs>